All right, howdy. So uh, in the second of the series of setup videos that I said I wouldn't be doing, um, I'm going to answer questions that I get about guitars with floating bridges and Bigsby vibratos, um, all kinds of stuff that people send to me about these guitars. Uh, first thing that always seems to mystify them is how to string up a Bigsby. Um, because they seem to think it's impossible to do it um, because when you go to put the string on the bridge end and then you go put it in the tuner it pops out and there's a quick way around that it does not involve buying any um, weird extenders for the tailpiece or anything like that it just works without any of that no no erasers needed no metal you know stop bars no nothing like that um, Next work in, uh, next thing uh, I get a lot on Bigsby's is the height of the vibrato arm relative to the guitar. Um, and there's some answers to that, uh, so I'll get into that. Then we get to the floating bridge, which is probably the most mysterious of all things for people. And I've actually seen them get scared away from some great guitars because they think there's something hinky about a floating bridge. Um, then we get to the height of the pickups. Uh, and um, finally, I'm going to um, talk about tuning stability on these things too. So for starters, um, stringing up a Bigsby, I actually pulled the E string off this 5120 uh, just to prove my point. But um, something with the Bigsby that will make it easier to string up. If you can see here what I've done, what I do when I get the string out of the package, I put a bend in the end of it. Okay, doesn't have to be quite this curved, just even a little bit of a, a crimp like that. Because what happens is you go to try to put it on this thing here, and it just wants to pop off every time you let go of it. So what you have to do is you have to maintain tension on it. So put this bend in here, um, string it around. It should just want to pop right onto that end. And of course, this one's going to give me trouble because I'm trying to show you. And immediately put tension on it. Keep tension on it. Okay. This isn't as hard as it seems, but it does take a little bit of practice. Um, hold it here, keeping tension on it. Don't worry about the bridge slot yet. It's going to figure itself out. Um, stick it through the tuner hole. Again, keeping tension on it. My usual method is to wrap around once on the top. This is actually harder because this string has been on the guitar already. Wrap around once and then put tension on it like this with your hand. Okay, then, this is where one of these will come in really handy, and I didn't have one for about the first 35 years that I played guitars. Uh, I just wound it by hand. But in this case, especially if you're using multiple wraps, this will help a bunch. So, go under the string on the second wrap around. And remember to keep tension on that thing. until it's got enough tension on it that it's not going to just pop out as soon as you let it go. So there you go, that's all there is to that. Um, So there, that gets it close enough. Uh, so that's the mystery of stringing a Bigsby solved. It really is just some practice and, you know, like I said, keep tension on it. I've tried things over the years, including putting a capo on it here so I can string it up. And that's actually kind of more problem than it's worth when you're trying to do uh, these 
tuners that are closer to the nut and the heavier strings at the same time. So for the E, it's a real pain. Um, but there's that part. Uh, the next thing is the height of the, the Bigsby arm. Um, it's hard to see here in this angle, but I like to have the Bigsby arm about that high. It's about two inches higher than the pickups. Um, it's kind of a, a preference thing, but that's what works best for me. Um, and a lot of guitars and uh, Bigsby bridge uh, tailpieces by themselves uh, seem to come with this uh, way up in the air, like three inches or more, which is just, you know, it's too big to be comfortable. Um, and uh, I've seen people on the internet saying to do things like cut a section out of the spring, which is doable, but it has really nice flat ends on both ends of it. Um, and you're likely to chew up the aluminum and the rest of this thing. Uh, doing that, as well as if you don't get it right, you know, if you cut too much off, you're kind of sunk. Uh, or, you know, trying to bend this arm, which is also not easy to do if you, you know, don't have a nice vise that won't chew it up. Um, the good news is that Bigsby makes different uh, sizes of these springs. So, um, I, without looking them up, I think they're like seven eighths uh, or you know, like, set, like three quarters, one inch and an inch and a half. Uh, but there are at least three different sizes available if you search for them. For Bigsby spring, you'll see different sizes on it. Um, I've actually had different Bigsby's come from the factory in the box with different uh, size springs on them for no apparent reason. Um, and I happen to have enough st sitting around that I usually have the, the right size one. I've never gotten one that's too low, but I get them all the time that are just too big and I don't know why that is. Um, so look that up before you go trying to modify any part of the tailpiece. The um, next thing to talk about is the uh, floating bridge. Now, I will say this example here, um, one thing that you can do that makes the tuning stability, which is kind of my last part, um, better is to replace this bridge uh, with one that's got roller saddles. Um, these are available pretty easily. This is just an import uh, AVR1 or Nashville bridge. Um, they're pretty easily available for like 15 bucks. Uh, maybe 20 bucks with the rollers on them. I have them on several other guitars with the rollers and of course if you're really looking to spend some some money but get a great bridge the um, the Space Command bridge uh, is great. It has actually saddles that are rollers the whole thing around a piece of threaded uh, bar in the middle and they're intended to let you customize the spacing between the strings but uh, just because of the way they're designed, they're also a perfect roller bridge. So that's another way to go. Um, placement of the bridge. Uh, people get all wound up about this and there really isn't that much to it. Um, you can uh, take a, me a tape measure and you know measure from here to here and try to kind of set the middle of the bridge at the scale length. Uh, that's the mathematical way to do it. Um, you can also do some harmonics and fretting on the 12th fret to kind of locate the middle of it. But the thing uh, is, on this guitar, there's not a whole lot of space in it. Some of them have a much longer reach between the tailpiece and the bridge, and uh, people get confused about how far to go with it. So something to remember really just basic is that as a great starting point, locate the bridge so that it's roughly around where these holes, these peaks in the F holes are. Um, almost always this kind of bridge is going to be used on an arch top and it's going to have F holes. If it's got cat's eyes, that's a little bit trickier, like the Rickenbackers, or I've got another uh, Rich that's got a uh, Rick or a Gretsch that's got um, kind of cat's eyes uh, holes. But if it's got F holes, this makes it really easy to start. My um, experience has been that if you get this corner of the bridge base about pointed at this hole or this peak and you get this one about pointed at this peak you're pretty close to right on and then you can just kind of measure in um, 
for fine tuning it, this one obviously has a lot more options. Some of the bars are just, you know, unadjustable steel, and what you have to do in that case is just get this string and this string as close as you can to being in tune by tilting this bridge in and out. Um, go slow with it, but you, you have to, you know, check it at, at tuning to see what it's doing. Um, and you can do that on this guitar body without screwing it up. Uh, if it makes you really nervous, you can tune down and then tune back up, but you're going to be doing that a whole lot. So I advise just trying to scoot it around with a little bit of practice. Um, so there's that. Now, um, if you have one of these kind here, where it's got individual saddles too, then I just kind of try to start, you know, where these two again are pretty close, and then you've got at least uh, plenty of adjustment on these strings that are going to be a bigger problem. Um, so do that. Um, next up is the height of these pickups. Uh, as they come from the factory, most of these Filtertrons do not have adjustment. Um, these two happen to because they're retrofits, but by default they would just be screwed in um, and these are just trim rings. So by default there's not any height adjustment on these. Something you can do, you'll notice I've got shim rings that are clear under this. I've got two under the bridge pickup and one under the neck pickup. You can get these from the same people that made these pickups, which is TV Jones. They sell the shims and they're pretty cheap. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to talk about real briefly, uh, tuning stability. So I've already mentioned that these saddles here, if you switch them out for rollers, you will get more action for less movement of the vibrato arm but also they're less likely to hang up here. These will actually eventually wear out from the wound strings being dragged across them. Um, but then uh, the next thing to look at is how you're winding the strings and how they go over the nut and lubing the nut. Um, for winding on non-locking tuners, I like to put about three turns around the wound strings and as many as I can keep track of and keep neat on the plain strings. Um, if you can see up close, better than you probably can on this camera, you can see those windings are just completely flat and neat. Um, it, it gives less to happen when you go to press the arm because this, the windings may slack a little bit, but if they're not tangled, they're probably gonna come back in about the same spot. And then lastly, I like to lube the nut. Uh, the easiest thing that I have found to use and the one that makes the less mess, least mess is uh, just to put some graphite in there. Uh, it looks a little dirty because you can see where it kind of comes out and you know stains the nut but that's okay it's not up for a beauty contest it's just trying to stay in tune. But you do all those things it will help to to keep it in tune. The other thing is too and I just kind of demoed this but Remember, this is not a this is not a drop off the cliff vibrato under normal use, and it, and it will go out of out of tune if you do that. This guitar wasn't quite in tune to start with, so a um, couple things that I find help is just one, you know, kind of keep your expectations low, and you know, do a that's about all I do with a, a vibrato, so it it kind of doesn't put a lot of stress on it. But the other thing is too, uh, especially if you find you're having strings hang up on here, is when you go to bring your guitar back up from a vibrato, actually pull a little bit. If something is stuck in the, the nut or stuck on the bridge, that'll kind of pop it back out. Uh, I do the same thing on strat type tremolos. I make them float um, because I find that if they're decked, stuff gets stuck in the nut or stuff or you know not quite tightened back up around the tuner the right way and then you've got nowhere to go to kind of you know bring it back in this into the right spot so i always like to bring up a little bit on the way back up from vibrato um, just to make sure that i kind of pop everything back in place so that's about it um there, it's not super mysterious but you know a lot of a lot of questions all kind of in the same place so i thought this was a good way to demonstrate it on this guitar 
because there are about five or six mysteries in this one just by itself. But uh, really not too bad once you get into it and uh, just, you know, remember take your time and be as neat as you can with everything and it should go great. Thanks.